Hi everyone, this is Neil Reiter, consultant audiologist and director of ClearWax. Thank you for joining me in my latest video using the Waxscape. And here we have a patient who attended with bilateral fully occluding earwax uh, and dead skin. And this is their left ear. This is the ear that they reported having most symptoms in. In fact, although their right ear was significantly more occluded with wax, um, they didn't actually exhibit any symptoms in the right ear until we removed the wax from this ear. And the reason why this wax was more symptomatic was that it was impacted against the eardrum, and you'll see that right at the end of the video. Now, the right ear procedure I will upload tomorrow, so do stay tuned for that. Now, um, now I know some of you, um, and I totally understand it, don't really enjoy the wax coat videos, um, and I can understand, and I've said it before, um, an endoscope provides an unparalleled field of view. And uh, I still use the endoscope, I use it a lot, but I, I must admit I'm using the wax coat um, probably on par with the endoscope. Now, the reason for the, um, the development of the wax scope and why I use it a lot is um, not everyone, unfortunately, is able to use an endoscope. And I'm making reference to really highly skilled and experienced audiologists, for example, and also some ENT. I mean, you speak to some ENT and they don't enjoy um, using an endoscope. Um, and it's a, for multiple reasons, but... Um, when we train, um, and primarily we train audiologists, they really struggle to stretch the ear open using an endoscope, particularly if uh, one of the specialists is right-handed. So they're holding the endoscope in their left hand and the instruments, i.e. the suction probe in this case, in their dominant right hand. They find it difficult to stretch open the left ear and then insert the instrument because the ear is not a straight tube. Um, it has a sigmoid shape, so an S-band, and the outer section of the ear canal is extremely narrow. It's particularly between the first and second band, so um, in the outer kind of centimetre, if you like. And so we've been training audiologists in endoscopic earwax removal since 2015, but it became very apparent very early on that a lot of specialists struggle, hence why we've developed the wax scope. Now, um, for me personally, I'm not uploading videos for any monetary gain in terms of, you know, ads and stuff. Um, anything, if, if it comes, obviously I'm going to welcome that, but um, it's I'm doing it more from an educational point of view, and I can't tell you the difference the Waxscope has made to so many specialists, because if people are not able to use an endoscope, um, they're reverting to kind of head-worn microscopes which are very limited in terms of magnification and also body posture and so there's so many people that um, have really uh, like fellow specialists who really appreciate um, what we've done with the wax gate because it has uh, and you know this is a quote from someone um, uh, revolutionized their career because they almost stopped performing ear wax removal because they were really really struggling and they've previously used an endoscope as well so I totally appreciate from a viewing perspective, it, it may not always be to one's liking, but uh, I'm really doing this to um, obviously show fellow specialists. And of course, um, it goes without saying, I manufacture the Waxscape, so it does help me advertise it as well. Um, but um, yeah, I just wanted to add that because I know, um, and I'm still going to upload some, um, and loads of endoscope. I've got loads and it's just time is not my friend at the moment. I've got so much stuff going on, um, but I have got loads of endoscope videos, um, so I will upload them, I do promise, in due course. So you can see we're, we're tackling this layer by layer. The outer layer was lighter in colour and there's a lot more dead skin. And this deeper wax, which has obviously been there for longer, um, it's oxidised. You can just see how dark it is and it's really, really impacted. Um, I used drops on several occasions just to soften this. And once we remove the wax, you'll see the eardrum is slightly... There's a bit of erythema there, so a bit of redness. Um, I did perform tympanometry, a pressure test, just to confirm um, the absence of any um, middle ear infection, so acute otitis media, which typically presents itself with an inflamed eardrum. And this is just this redness is just because the, the wax was really impacted, and um, they did report their ear being very tender prior to attending as well. 
and so you can see that view there you can see actually the buildup of earwax so earwax consists primarily of um, dead skin cells so desquamous um, epithelial skin cells um, um, loose hairs so they're the dry matter um, so the skin cells the dead skin cells and the hairs kind of if you like provide the scaffolding the matrix of the wax plug and filling in the gaps is the wet matter which consists of sebum which is secreted by the sebaceous glands which is an oily lipid secretion um, and also an oily sweat produced by the ear um, by modified um, apocrine glands which are sweat, sweat glands um, and they produce more of an oily um, protein type of sweat as opposed to ecrine sweat which is the normal sweat you find on your brow um, if it's hot or you do some exercise that's more salt and water so this is more kind of an oily um, a protein filled um, sweat with some lipids as well and so the wet matter kind of fills in the gaps and it all coagulates and forms into earwax and so we know this has been there for a long long time you can just tell by the color now i did ask the patient whether they um, had been poking in the ear because it was so impacted it just felt like it was pushed in and um, at first they said no but then they did say that occasionally did uh, i mean they've not been flying in a while but they do wear filtered air plugs uh, when flying so it, it could just be one occasion really that although they weren't symptomatic after using it but it would have pushed the wax further in so this is the layer on the drum and that's coming away and the patient had used quite a few so we've used some drops to soften the wax but the patient themselves had it also use some drops you're going to see it collects on a puddle near the eardrum and this is a classic example where someone uh, a, a, an ear specialist removing wax would really struggle with this using loops you just wouldn't get the magnification and they probably would have just left this but with the wax scope now it's, whenever you remove your wax off the eardrum it's not simple but you can see that view we've got and we're just going to get all this liquid out and you're going to get some residue and it will dry up but you can see we've suctioned all that the main mass that's the eardrum so there's no light reflex there normally when you present a light on a healthy eardrum you can it does reflect light at the top part there's a bit of bulging there so they, they had been blowing their nose so uh, the pressure test did show that there was some positive pressure but well within normal range well i hope you enjoyed that video guys take care keep well and speak soon bye